Here I am boarding the Union of South Africa at Children on the special A4 collection day. Nice and warm here. Where did you come from? Uh, well, we live in London, we're up on holiday. I was going to say that, that's not a London accent you've got. No, South Wales. South Wales. Morning, Christopher. Morning, how are we doing? Hello, sober, buddy. What are you sober. here for? Uh, for entertainment. You know. This is one of my firemen from the Strasbourg. I don't way, so. want to buy a half season ticket. <laughs> <laughs> So you're going to go back to the corner yeah. and tell them how many mistakes I've made, have you? Yeah. <laughs> when I put the tape on. <laughs> how are you keeping? No bad, no good, bad. Good, good. Oh, morning everybody. We're sorry for the, the wait. Uh, the museum stays going only like five minutes, but it's a nice day, so we, we, we keep people waiting a bit longer. I'll give you a quick history on the engine. This engine was built in 1937 and uh, was bought uh, in 1966 by the current owner, John Cameron. He bought it straight from British Rail from Aberdeen, Ferry Hill. And he has been, he's uh, owned it longer than LNER and British Railway put together, almost 55 years now. Uh, we've had this through four overhauls, major overhauls. Uh, the latest one uh, was 2011 and it cost just shy of a million pounds. Uh, a lot of that was spent on the boiler and uh, all these new electrical equipment that you can see behind us uh, is the, the new modern regulations requirements for running on the, the national network. This one here with a little glass um, per, uh, window on the front, that's uh, the, the latest in signalling technology, that's the GSMR, it's basically a £25,000 mobile phone, uh, you can text from it, you can phone from it, you can order a pizza, make you a cappuccino, it's, it's a, a nifty PC kit, it's uh, designed uh, as, a, as a safe, uh, as health and safety, it uh, eliminates the, the need for the driver to get off the engine, everything, everything on the national network has that, this is a bigger version, the likes of your Pendolinos will have a, a smaller, more compact version. But because it's a steam engine, it needs to be bigger um, to just to handle the, the, the heat that we get off it and the vibration. It's a bit more sturdy. Um, so that, that, that eliminates the need for the driver to go down if we get stuck at a signal or if we break down or something. We can just press a button and the, the signal centre knows exactly where you are. And uh, he'll send you a little text message on the screen telling you what to do, whether it be it's wait at a signal or sod off or pass a signal like danger or something like that. Uh, it's just a, there's a phone as well, so if you need a bit more conversation, you can the phone will go and you just talk like a, a normal phone. This one up here, believe it or not, is a black box data recorder, same as what I have on the aeroplanes. Um, a lot less data is recorded on it. Uh, electrical equipment and hot steam engines don't really go. And uh, to put little sensors on components on the back end to just fry them, it just wouldn't work. Um, so it really basically um, just records speed and direction of travel. Um, if you have a, a derailment or an accident somewhere, the RERB will come out and take out the, the card and read it and see if the driver's been a naughty boy and going too fast and things like that. There's a 24 volt system on this engine. Uh, we've got a, a, a batteries underneath which is charged up here through the, the blue plug. Uh, and that's the battery charger in there which feeds the batteries in another locker. Uh, it's fully electric in here, short of putting a pantograph on the engine running off 20, uh, the 25 kV overheads. So we've got a cab light there. We've got all LED lights here, like your dash, uh, your car, your, your dashboard in your car, it lights up all the dials. Um, nighttime running, going through tunnels, that sort of thing. Gauge glasses are, are lit. We've got nice little fancy LEDs in here as well. Uh, the GSMR, it all works in conjunction with the braking system. This engine's got two, two types of brakes on it. We've got a vacuum brake there, which is local work and tender only. And we've got the air brake here, which is what we use when we're, when we're on the main line. It's a big loop system. It's connected to the GSMR. The TPWS, and if one thing doesn't work, then nothing works. It's a fail-safe system. Um, if, for example, the TPWS, this is the, the detection for signals ahead of us, uh, chain protection and warning system. There's magnets in the track, and there's magnets of uh, uh, the receiver in the front of the engine. And depending on what colour your signal set, you'll either get a bell for a clear signal, and if it's a, a danger signal, a red, two yellows, single yellow, you'll get a horn and uh, the driver needs to cancel that within two and a half seconds and if he doesn't you get a full brake application and uh, you get people not happy with soup and coffee in their laps and things like that um, and if the driver does do that he usually gets a P45 at the end of the shift for not doing his job properly um, so that's all interlinked with the, with the braking system as well if for whatever reason there's a fault in the braking system this uh, this will work properly and the, it's just, the electrics in this engine is very very complicated the, the, 
it took us eight and a half hours just to detect one loose wire a couple of years ago. It's, there's, there's a lot of wiring in this. Uh, so the air brake system, you can operate the vacuum brake via the, the M3 brake valve here. Um, but you can't operate the, the brake valve, the air brake valve through the vacuum brake. So if you're on a train, partly down the line, and you're making a brake application, it's actually it's supplying your locomotive brake as well. So you've got a continuous brake right the way through the train. Um, we've got the regulator here, it makes us go. Uh, this one's a reverser, uh, it's your, your cut off forwards, backwards brake valve. Um, we've got all the gauges, the new gauges up here, if you've been in any other locals you'll notice that there, there's very, very minimum gauges. Uh, these are your, um, your, this your air reservoir tanks, we've got five tanks under the tender uh, for, for air storage and that in turn feeds the, the train pipe. Um, and contrary to, to what people believe when, they, when people say applying the brakes, you're not actually applying an air brake. Um, it's not like you're, you're foot brake in a foot brake on a bus or a, on a coach, you don't need air to actually apply the brakes. The air is created to suck the brakes off. It's a fail-safe system. So when you, when you actually put the brakes on, you're letting air into the system, and it's putting the brakes on that way. Um, as I say, it's a fail-safe system. If something was to happen, if you get a burst pipe, or God forbid if the train ever splits in section, splits into, air leaks into the system because the bags are split, the brakes come on, everybody's hopefully safe. Uh, we've got the vacuum gauge here, this is for the, the ejector brake here, and the speedometer. <laughs> One of the most asked questions over the past three days has been by under 10s, saying, how did they know Mallard did 126 when the speed only went up to 100? <laughs> and no adult has actually noticed this, it's been all under 10s that have been asking this. Um, and to be honest, Mallard didn't have a speedometer. Nope. Uh, this, one, this, this, one was, this one was this one was uh, the, the speedometers were a BR invention or not invention addition should we say? Uh, this one got fitted in 1957 with the speedometer. Um, this is your steam chest pressure gauge. It's uh, basically a gauge that tells the driver how much steam he's uh, admitting into the steam chest into the cylinders through the, the use of the regulator. Uh, you've got two water gauges here. As far as I'm concerned, that's the two most important gauges on the engine. Um, it tells you how much water's in the boiler. Um, you don't want the water level to drop too much, you start uh, causing damage and thousands of pounds when you when you damage the boilers and these things. The, the, all these uh, shuttle valves are basically like your ignition on a car, uh, they all control different uh, different parts of the engine. So some controls the blower, the steam heat in, the air valve, uh, the air pump. Um, and uh, We don't usually use them unless the engine's sitting for a considerable amount of time. Uh, we do get burst pipes, same as we have in your house through, through winter. If you get any uh, condensation or any excess water left in the pipe from the engines cool down and steam is condens condensated in the pipes. If it's not drained during the winter, it will turn into ice, uh, expand, and, and you will have split pipes when you come to steam thing again in, in several weeks. So we, we take them all, we, we isolate them all, and we take off all the, the, the unions and bleed everything. On this side, we've got the, the pressure gauge sitting at what, 190 pounds just now. Uh, and that one there's your uh, steam heating gauge. Uh, steam heating pipe runs right the way the length of the train, front to back, pressurised system. And under the coaches there's spurs, uh, unions come off to the radiators underneath the, co the, the seats. And uh, through the, 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 the wonders of uh, heat convection, heat rises and hopefully keeps your bum warm. This contraption here, this is uh, a, a new addition. Uh, this is the uh, lubricator for the uh, Western House pump for the air brake system. We've got a, a two-stroke Western House pump as a compressor mounted in front of the arse pan between the frames. And uh, the last time uh, she was out uh, before overhaul, it was in a more awkward place. And uh, it was giving us a lot of grief and there wasn't oil getting through and we had quite a few air, brake, uh, air pump failures. So we moved it up here and every, for every stroke the, the pump does, this turns round about a quarter of a turn and pump, pumps oil through that pipe in the three at the back, two at the top, two at the bottom and it uh, lubricates the, uh, the air pump that way. This one here is your whistle. Unfortunately, we've been told under no circumstances are we allowed to play with it. Um, <laughs> on the grounds that if, if I start, then the other two will start and we'll end up fighting each other all day. <laughs> and I think after a day of that, I think you could kill on the sound of an A4 chime. The tender, we've got 9 penny coal in the tender uh, and 5,000 gallon of water. This one's slightly less because we've got the corridor tender at the side there for access into the coaches. Um, but to put it into context, your average family car will do 35, 40 miles to the gallon. This locomotive at 75 mile an hour, uh, with working hard, will do uh, 30 gallons of water to every mile. Um, and that's actually quite economical uh, for an engine this size. So water stops are quite common. You'll, you'll 
if you look at times that you, you see us book for quite a few water stops, every 100 miles or so you need to stop and top up your water. Um, we're getting a look now. <laughs> Any questions before we have to ask you? <laughs> what what, what <laughs> is it generated? Uh, it's through batteries. Oh, uh, we've got a series of batteries. And so that they have to be charged up when it goes to the yep, station? Yeah, that's a uh, blue socket up there behind you. Right, that, uh, so it's just the plugged, in, plugged, plugged into the main? Into, uh, a 240 volt mains. Right. Um, and we just we charge the batteries like that overnight. Right. It's not too bad when we're sitting here just now, but if we're out on a tour all day, it's, it's um, keeping all the electrical equipment. Oh. Uh, and and you'll, you'll get about 20 hours out of it before you start getting into trouble. So uh, a good 12 hour charge will do you a, a full day's tour. Right. Um, and it goes in charge every night we come back. And it, it also operates the uh, the lights and the cab lights and all that as well. Right. I mean, we're, we're going short of putting a pantograph on the roof and running off the 25 kilo, kilo volt overheads. It is an electric engine. Um, to go in the main line, you, you need you need electricity yeah. for this to go in the main line. I think Tornado's actually fitted with uh, its own little powerhouse. It's got dynamometers and alternators yeah, right. and all sorts to charge the batteries on the go. But uh, with us having the air tanks underneath in the tender, there's just nowhere to put a, no, a dynamo a sufficient size uh, to or an alternator. So, to, so to charge can it pick up electric the off the overhead wires? No, no, no. 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 It's short, short of doing that. Um, the, the health and safety buffers won't allow us to do that. They get a bit scared when we go near the wires. Um, someone said to me yesterday, "Oh, where would we be without health and safety?" I said, "I'm having fun." Well, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be. Well, any, well, any more questions? It was no, worth the wait. No, good yeah. It was worth the oh, wait. Take care, we'll we'll young man. We'll see you. We'll, we'll see we'll we'll you soon. For you, for he'll empty the box. For that's that. fine. That's <laughs> I can just fit in this one, I can't even fit in the other one. Yeah. If you give us you give us some news by now, I'll come down the mountain. I've got some yeah, interesting right. interesting yeah. gossip for you. Oh gossip! Like gossip! Gossip. <laughs> gossip from the north! Thanks very much. No bother, mate, no bother! Can I train in the drivers? Thank you. A lot. <laughs> well that was a good talk on this the Union of South Africa. A lot of people here. I'll have to go and try and find Edwin and Derek. Union of South Africa. I think I'm able to drive it now.